All right, folks, welcome back to Plain Fun RC. I'm your host, Saul, and we're continuing on with our ACR Composites Con Racer. As you can see here in our focus uh, is, is still the battery compartment, and now we're talking about the trays. So these are the battery trays that you can get from F3Aunlimited.com. They're wonderful trays. They actually hold up to a 10S battery, believe it or not, and they're very lightweight, laser cut, uh, they come with two of these really nice carbon fiber rods, just fantastic. And those rods are passed through those holes there on the side. It's super easy to put together. It's just the tray itself. And then what you get is this is the bait. This is the, I guess you'd call it the base, if you will, or the part that the carbon rods pass through. And to give you a perspective, here we have two trays together because we're going to wind up putting two trays in the pond racer. And you can see on the bottom how the uh, carbon fiber rods just pass through. Now, normally this, these rods are just for one tray, but we're setting them up for two. And the way the trays are going to wind up going in is that they're going to go in like this and sit like that. So what we'll do is we'll drill some hole. We'll drill two holes on this side, two holes on this side, glue it in place, and it's done. Now, the great thing about the trays, what I love about them is that it's absolutely perfect for when you put two of these trays together. Obviously, you could fit up to a 20S pack on there if you wanted to. Uh, one of the great things about it, as you can see, it's got slots here, 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 and here. And that's all for the uh, Velcro straps. So it's a perfect fit, and uh, it's going to easily accommodate the 15 cells for each side. Um, I just, I've ordered a couple extras because uh, this is only one of the trays and I need two for each side. So we're going to get started with the process. More to come. All right, folks, welcome back to Plain Fun RC as we continue with our, um, installation of the battery tray. So our battery trays arrived from, um, well, they're from Gator RC, but it's, uh, F3Aunlimited.com. Uh, anyway. Uh, I thought the tray that I had here where I put two of them together was a 10S tray. I thought each of these individually were 10S, but it turns out that they're not. And the 10S tray is a lot bigger. And for perspective, here are the two trays joined together. And here is our 10S tray. And let me switch these around. And you can see... Now the 10S tray is almost exact, almost the same width as the uh, as the two 6S trays put together. So um, what's going to happen is we're going to wind up putting this double tray into this pod here, and then we're going to put, and then I'm going to put a, a 7S, uh, 14S batteries on here to see if they fit, and if they do, then we're just going to wind up putting one of these 10S trays into this pod over here. So I did not know that that was gonna happen. Uh, so, more to come. All right, folks, continuing with our update here on the installation of the battery trays. Let's talk about what we're seeing here. So there's our carbon fiber rod. Now there's two of them, and to give you a perspective of how it's gonna look once both are passed through, here's the bottom of our battery tray. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drill a 5 16 hole on each side. Now, what I did is I took this portion, uh, sorry, uh, right here, this portion here, and before I glued it on, I held it up to the side of the fuselage here, like so, oh, I'm sorry, like so, okay, to, to get the holes lined up, drew a circle where the holes are, and then went ahead and drilled them with a 5 16 drill bit. Uh, and then I'm just doing a test fit right now, and you can see it's a perfect fit. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop in the uh, the battery tray. Now, one of the reasons why you see it's kind of it's fairly high up from the bottom is because um, as far as the speed controls, I'm thinking about mounting them on the actual firewall. But if that does not work, then I'm going to need to put them here at the bottom. So I want to keep some space here at the bottom because uh, so I can mount the speed control now. Um, that's where I'm going to wind up putting, because as, if you remember, there's that gap here in the bottom of the actual firewall, and that'll allow air to flow through, thereby cooling the speed control. So, um, that's why we put it at the height. Now, when you're determining the height, you're going to want to make sure that you put the batteries on the tray and then place the, whoop, oh, oh, geez, and place the tray in here 
with the batteries in place. And then that'll give you the, the, the proper height and uh, from the uh, battery tray itself to the top of the actual um, hatch. And you wanna leave enough space so you can fit the batteries in there. So um, that's where we're at. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, um, get the trays in. All right. All right, everybody, continuing with the update for the uh, battery tray. So you can see we've just got this tray just put in sort of roughly. You can see the the carbon fiber rods that are just too long, but I'm just trying to make sure it's placed correctly. And it's, it's sitting perfectly. Now, one of the things you need to check as well is you're going to take your uh, your assembly uh, with the firewall, and you want to just, just set it on here like so. And what you're looking for is, uh, I'm going to do this kind of upside down. There it is. Look at the bolts as they relate to the actual tray. Notice how there is ample space between the actual bolts and the tray. That's very important because you don't want those bolts coming in contact with the battery. What you can do is you go on Amazon, they sell those old, those um, pencil erasers you used to put on top of your erasers when you're in elementary school. Uh, you can use those to help protect the, uh, the batteries from those bolts. But you can see anyway, the spacing is perfect. The height from top to bottom is absolutely perfect. That's more than enough space for the battery. So very happy with that. We're gonna go ahead and cut the excess carbon fiber and then go ahead and antipoxy it in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on the other pod as well. So things are just moving along like grease lightning. More to come. All right, folks, continue with the update on the installation of the tray for the pond racer. That you can see that uh, basically it's done. We just have to glue the uh, carbon fiber rods in place and uh, put a little glue on the uh, tray here where the rods pass through the tray. But she's done, and you can see an absolute perfect fit. What we're looking at right now is, is a two 7S packs. There's going to be an 8S pack on the bottom and a 7S on the bottom. Like I said, this is a 10S tray, so you could easily fit a 10S pack. You can see we've got a little extra room on the sides there. Let me scoot this over just a little bit, give you an idea. Yeah, there we go. And you can see if you look here, you, you got you got a little extra space, perfect uh, for an extra cell. So uh, that that's that's just going to be absolutely perfect. Can't ask for anything better. Um, so good fit, and you can see it's uh, sitting beneath the uh, the wood there for the uh, for the hatch. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. So good space from the top. We're going to even take a second to put the hatch in as well. Take a moment to do that. There we go. All right, so with the hatch in place, you can see we've got a perfect spacing. So worked out great, excellent job. Um, can't ask for anything better. Uh, just went 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 uh, went together really nicely. Very happy with the fit. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and we'll move on to uh, some other stuff. All right, more to come. Just a, one little last little bit of the video, just a quick view from the top so you can see how easy it is to access it. All right, more to come. One little addendum, uh, folks, to the battery tray. I initially, initially I had mentioned I was going to be using a, uh, a 10S on this side and a double tray on that side, but I actually wound up using one of those 10S uh, batteries, uh, battery trays here and a 10S battery tray there as well they just worked out so easy much easier to install and they were a perfect fit so i'd recommend those trays when you're doing an electric conversion for the actual pond racer itself all right more to come all right folks continuing on with the pond racer we're going to focus on the installation of the cowlings now normally what i would do is i would take a block of wood and i would put it right along the edges here uh, and then use that as a, as a spot to mount the cowling. But fortunately, the pond racer has a flange, about a quarter inch flange roughly, more than enough to go ahead and say, put in about a, um, a number two wood screw right there, very small. Now I have these wood screws, but I also have these really cool washers with a rubber grommet, which is always nice because when you're screwing down these screws onto a cowling, it can tear up the paint. But by having these rubber grommets, it actually keeps that from happening. Another trick is you can use, um, uh, let's see, you can use silicone, silicone fuel tubing. If you look at my Cessna here, look very carefully, 
you'll notice you can see we use some silicone fuel tubing as a cushion between the actual screw and the cowling. That also helps to pr protect the cowling, but it also helps to prevent cracking, which can occur uh, over time at the actual site of where the screw is drilled in. So keep that in mind also, you don't want your cowling to crack because then that's when it can fall off in flight. We're gonna use five screws. We're gonna be putting one here, okay? Then we're gonna basically in, in an X pattern, in an, uh, sorry, in an X pattern, we're gonna put one here, one here, and then on the exact opposite side, we're gonna be putting one here, and then over here, over here, we're gonna come down and we're gonna be putting one roughly right about here. So, pretty straightforward, just drill a couple holes and then just put your screw in, but we'll uh, do it on both. Now, the important thing to remember when you're putting your cowls on, Notice, look here, I marked it off each cowling. Is, this one is for pod one, which is what this one is here. And this is pod two. So don't forget to go ahead and mark off your cowling as pod two. All right, folks, more to come. All right, folks, so we've got our cowlings on. And uh, just a quick FYI, make sure that when you're drilling the holes to mount the, uh, basically they're just servo screws. Um, use 564th if you will, 564 drill bit, but it works out perfect. Nice and sturdy, you can see I'm giving it a shake, not moving at all. And when I was talking about the X pattern, you can see we've got the three up here at the top. And then when I come down here at the bottom, you can see we've got one sitting over there and then one sitting right over there. All right, so cowlings are mounted. Now it's good time for us to go ahead and move on to getting the landing gear in. We're gonna get that landing gear mounted because I want to go through and make sure that when landing gear retracts, uh, it's able to uh, pass through the pre-cut opening. You can see it there at the bottom, down there. Uh, pass through that pre-cut opening without it interfering with anything. All right, more to come.